Welcome back to the tutorial where I show you how you can create some parts of this beautiful island scene. And the special thing is that all you see here is done without any code. It's completely created in shader graph. And what's even more incredible is that this animation is done in shader graph. There's no code involved. So based on the camera distance, the calm opens and closes and shows the pearl. Let's do this by creating empty scene and drag and drop the FBX of the clam. And we will directly create a material that is just wet and we assign it here to the missing material, the second, because this mesh is made of so this FBX is made of two meshes. So one is a pearl in the inside and the first one, this is the clam. So I will delete this one. We will create a new shader from PBI graph. We will call this a uh, clam and we will create a new material also called clam. And the material is of course a shader graph clam. And so we can now assign it here as the first or the zero element. And this is what it looks like. Let's open the shader and here we go. So the first thing that we do is add the UV, split the UV, take a step node, insert the UV into, so here the edge, can delete the edge, set the edge to 0 0.5. So what we do is the UV is the value of the texture. So this is the texture of the shell, for example, and everything that's below 0 0.5 is black, everything above it is white. We can set this to the albedo, for example, and we will save the asset. Now, what you directly see is that the the this part is dark and this part is white and that's because um, the FBX is modeled in a way that the lower part of the image is mapped to the lower part of the clam and to the lower part of the clam and the white part is mapped to the white part of the clam. Okay, um, I will just delete the step node add a lerp node and linear interpolation based on this V value. And I will uh, use two colors. Maybe the first color is something like the orange, a very light orange. And the other one is orange too, a little bit darker. Put them together here. And we get a beautiful gradient. We can now set this to the albedo, save the asset. There we go. And this is all we need for now. I change the colors. Okay, let's talk about position. We want some rotation in it. So let's take the position and we take the position of the object. And what I can do is split and merge. So we will take a split node and a combined node. And for example, I split the X, Y and Z values and combine them again and set it to the position. So, and I can combine and split them as often as I want. So let's take the X, Y and that value and split them again. So now the this is a vector two that's coming out because I only supplied the first two uh, entry points here. Now I'll split it again and combine it again here. And as you can see, I save my asset. So, and uh, yeah, basically nothing changed, which is pretty good because we want to do the changes now. We want to rotate and the rotation should be done in the center 0, 0.0. We want to rotate about around 90 degrees. And we can take this vector here 
and this is what we do. We rotate the y and z value of the vertices. So save and here we are. It looks weird because it is weird. Um, it's not rendered correctly. So it's only one side of the shell that is really rendered. So we, um, so we can go here and we can go to the PBR master node and say two-sided save. Okay, why does it look so weird now? The outline is here, but the shell itself is here, or the clam. And the reason for this is because the CPU is thinking that the, the clam is here and the GPU is render it, rendering it here. But we only want to rotate a part of it so we need some kind of a mask, mask and we use the UV for that and we will split it. This is what we did, did already, right? So just split and this time we will take the step node. This goes in, the step is 0 0.48, uh, it's the wrong one. It's the same as here below. And now we have this white and black and this is nearly the same as mounting. And now we set the rotation as a multiplication of this node. And maybe this 90 degrees. Now it's only applied to the upper part and let's drag and drop it, set it to the rotation here, save the asset. And there we go, our shell is open now. The only thing that is really missing is the animation. And the animation is based on the camera and the object position. So we go to object, we go to camera, and add the two nodes here, and there is something called distance. And now we can take the distance of two vectors, for example, the position of the object and the position of the camera. And this distance is, for example, now 10, now it's one, on, and now it's really nearly zero. Okay, now we want to add something. And we add an open distance. I will set this to minus one as default. And this is what we add to our distance. And what we really want is that the values are really low are really high when we are close and really low when we are far away because this is the amount of rotation which is now this 90 uh, here. This is what we go for. We want to um, do not set this value as a constant. We want to set it via the distance of those two. Okay, um, one minus. Now, instead of having a low value here and a high value here, we have the exact opposite. Uh, next up we will clamp the value. We want to have it between 0 and 1. And now we linear interpolate again. Okay, we will do it based on this value. And if this value is low, the interpolation should be 0. If this value is high, the uh, interpolation should be 1. And one is not the thing that we want, we want the rotation. For example, 140 degrees. And we set it here. And then we can plug it into our 90. Now our 90 is not based on uh, a constant anymore, it's based on the distance. And here you see, we're going close to the shell, the shell opens, we go far away, the shell closes. And the main trick is the UV and how it's set up. So, so the UV is uh, zero, zero here, and zero, or oh, one, zero here. So one, zero. And here it's zero, one. And here it's something like one, one. So more or less, this is a UV and we really take a cut here. So everything that is on the second value, it's always U and V greater than 0 0.5 will be affected by our, by our effect. So this is what it looks like.
And this is how you can animate your mesh completely in the graphics card without writing any code. Uh, you can use the distance between the object and the camera, but you can do so many other things uh, just to make this animation happen. So I hope you have fun. At the end, we are looking again at the result. And if you like the series, please leave a like. Subscribe to my channel to get more straight to the point tutorials.